Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my series working with my unrepaired Ender 3 Max Neo that I got off eBay. Today I'm going to install a Big Tree Tech Mana E3 Easy board into the printer. Now, I've actually struggled with this. Uh, it turns out getting the proper case to make everything fit has been a lot tougher than I thought, and I've actually had to go through several cases to find something that would work. And I finally found a, a model that I think is, is appropriate. And so we're going to work with this, and I have it on screen. And the other thing is, is off camera, switch over to my tripod, I've added some extra length to some of my wires. So that's one thing you're going to need to look at if you're rewiring the Ender 3 Max Neo. You probably need to extend the wires at least a little bit. In my case, again, about six inches was all I needed. It turns out if you look, and I'll put a link in the video descriptions, there's actually some uh, end stop and stepper motor extension wires. I think they're like $10. I just use those. The other change I made is I've done an independent wire to each of the Z motors. That way it's an independent uh, dual Z. Let's start with my case I selected, and then we'll get everything situated. I'm switching over my desk cam. Again, I apologize all the junk on my desk. I've, I've been rewiring, working on too many projects at once. So I have my case. I've installed the case fan. Right now, the biggest issue I have with the case fan is I, it's actually too small. I'm going to get a bigger one. My first step here, I'm going to fit the board in. And this one, I'm actually going to wire the board once it's installed. Now, first, I was a little nervous that there was going to be some problems here. This is actually set up really nice. I thought I wasn't going to be able to access the port for the CB1. And that's there. The ports are all look good. So I'm really pleased with the setup of this case. Additionally, I have plenty of room here in the back to wire things up. Maybe one complaint is this is closed off here, so I'll have to run the wires through here. Maybe on a redesign, having this be a U shape with none of the top here might be a little bit better or easier to work with. So let me take this and let me get this screwed into the case. And I'll do that off camera, so nobody wants to see me screwing stuff in. And then uh, I'll come back in a second. So I have the board situated. And the one thing I'm gonna do while I'm sitting here is I'm going to plug in the case fan. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit. I don't have enough line here, let me look. And what I'm gonna do is I'll plug that in right here into fan two. And I'll probably have to look at the, how to set that up. Okay, look here. Everything's looking good. I should check all the ports before I seat this. Everything looks like I have plenty of room. That's looking good. So let's switch over to my tripod and then we'll sit the case in there and make sure everything fits right. So I have the printer up on its side. Let's just do it this way. Slip this in. I'm just going to slip it part way. And then I want to gather all the wiring. And all the wiring. Let's grab this in two different bundles and just start slipping this through here. And I'm doing this so I have a little extra room. Now, the thing that's going to change here is I'm doing all this wiring, but I am going to install a uh, stealth burner on here. Now, maybe just to simplify this. Well, for right now, let me just do all the wiring. It looks like I have everything 
push through here. I'm just going to continue to slide the case back. That's seated all the way in. Holes are lining up up front here. So that's actually looking good. Now, let me resituate the printer. And what I'm going to do is lay it down. And then we can look in on the wiring. And I'll do that. Okay, so I have the printer situated where I can now see in appropriately. So let me get my diagrams up so we can see how we need to wire this. And so I'm just going to call up the manual from Big Tree, Big Tree Tech's GitHub site. Let me get that on screen. Okay, so I'm going to start with the diagram like this. Now, if you can't see it in the diagram, it's negative and positive on the power in. Now, what I've done on my board is I always mark the screws uh, as red for the positive, so that way I can see that if the space is tiny. Now, I need to just get these wires sort of situated where I can figure out what's what. Here is the power right here. And that's going to go, so it's heated bed, power, and then hot end. Let me start with the heated bed, just because that looks like that. It's going to go first. And get my screwdriver here. And this is why having such a messy workspace is a good idea. I'm just going to make sure these are nice and loose. Now, I did put barrels on here for safety. I do recommend that. So we're going to go negative first. Might pull that case out a little bit so I can see. Let me loosen this. Of course, I might have used ferrules that are a little bit too big here, but let's see if we can get them in. It doesn't help. I have a big hand in my hands, fat fingers and everything else. So let's see if we can get this. So let me get off camera here and then I'll do it. Yeah, although you can't see it well, I have the heated bed it's plugged in. Now, right here, slide my case back a little bit. Right here, I have the power, and this is going to be negative, then positive, so black, and then red. So let's get this installed. Got the in. I'm just going to tighten it because this is going to be much space. And let's see if we can get the, the positive in. Like I said, there's these in particular hard to get again with the small space. But there we go. Got it. Now I just want to tighten these because as I'm working with the hot end, I don't want to accidentally unplug anything. So again, I fire this on the hot end. Now the hot end doesn't matter how things go in that's in these next set of screws here. And again, you can see it in the diagram. Just make sure these are loose. Got one in, and I'm just gonna tighten it. Get the other. But once I'm done with these ones in the back, these are the hardest ones to get situated. Again, that has to do with maneuverability and the fact that I can't hold on to things and I drop them constantly. Okay, so that's in. Now let's get everything else situated so this shouldn't be too hard. 
Um, let me move my diagram around so we can see a little bit better, and then I'll come back. So I'm gonna start wiring over in this area of the bed. And first thing I'm going to do is if we look at the diagram right in this area, let's do the, here's the TB, the bed thermistor. It's gonna go right here. Here is the uh, hot end thermistor. It's gonna go right here. Let's look at this. This one right here is the, move it over, is the runout sensor. That goes right here, but, oh, I'm sorry, right over here is the, here's the wiring for the CR touch. It's gonna go right next to the thermistors. Let's get that plugged in. Now we have the filament runout. It's gonna go right here. And let me look at this. And right under the filament runout is the X end stop. So let's look at our wiring. Oh, here's the X end stop. It's going to go right here. And next, we're going to have the Y end stop. Look at this. So. Y end stop's gonna be right up here. So let's look for Y. There it is. Let's run this under. Let's move this around a little bit. Y is gonna go right here. Now, so it looks like we have almost everything on that side of the board. In fact, we do have everything on that side of the board, so that's good. Now I'm going to go up here and let's do the stepper motors. So this is Y. Let's hold off on doing this. Let's find X. Let's see. This is the extruder. So I have X right here, and let's again move our diagram. That over here. And the end stops, not the end stops, the motors are all right here. So let's start with that X. So we have X. That's gonna go in the first motor slot. Next, we have Y, and I have to find that. There it is, right here. That's going to go right here. It's the next one up, going from back to front. Next, we have Z, and I actually have two Zs, and I have Z1 and Z2. So this is a little bit different. So we're going to do the Z1 right here. And we're going to skip Z2. Okay? Because if we do this Z2, they're both going to be running off the same motor. I want them independent. Since I have five steppers, I'm going to next do E for my extruder. So let's plug that in. And then we have up here at the top. E1, what we're going to do is plug in Z2 in E1. And that'll give us an independent stepper for both Zs. And I apologize, I keep bumping the camera. Hands aren't steady today. Okay, now I did forget I have these two fans down here. Let's look at these. Uh, the first one is the, I believe, the hot end fan. So hot end fan is going down here in fan one. Or I'm sorry, fan zero. I should have plugged these in before I did the motors, but...
And then next one is the park coin fan. That's going in fan one. There. Let's just look at all my wiring. Looks like everything is wired in. Now, changes I'll probably make is I'll get a bigger fan for the for the case. Right now, this is okay. And then I have the case top, so I'm going to slip that in. And why don't I leave this open right now? So I have a chance to install some other stuff. But I have the Wi Fi antenna for the man aboard. So let's get that installed. This little plug here. It was right down in here. It's like a button. So I have the Wi Fi installed, the Wi Fi antenna right here. And then I just basically use the sticky to put it, uh, the sticky side to put it over here and back. So that should be good enough. Now, what I'm going to do is pause and start a second video for the install of Clipper and all that good stuff. So if you have any questions or comments, please post below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Have a good day. This Bye. is Mike from Minimal 3DP and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.